All right, welcome to part seven in our series on creating our first Django application. I'm Avi and let's get started. Now we left off where we'd created a nice looking view, not really, but we had our questions showing, we clicked on one and we're taken to the detailed view. The next thing is to actually show the choices of the question as well as the question text. So let's go ahead and do that. Head over to your detailed function in your views.py file delete the return HTTP response and go ahead and type question is equal to question dot objects dot get and then you want to pass in a PK. So PK basically is the ID and that is equal to question underscore ID. So question is equal to question dot objects dot get PK is equal to question ID. And now we either create the context variable or we just pass in the dictionary inside of the render function. So we can say return render request and then pulse slash detail dot HTML. And then we have our context. So our context, you can either pass in a variable with the dictionary or you can create the dictionary just like this. So we have question and then colon question. Awesome. So now that we have our question and we're passing it and rendering the template, let's go ahead and create the template. So inside of your templates folder, inside of the post directory, new HTML file, and go ahead and call this detail.html. Awesome. So the next thing we have to do is display our, first of all, question header and then the three choices. So we can easily do this by one, using an H1 tag to display the question text, and that's gonna be question dot question text. All right, pretty straightforward HTML right there. And then the next thing is, after I add the double curly braces, we need to show the choices. So just like we iterated through all the questions in our question object, we want to iterate through all the choices of this question using a for loop. So this again would be an unordered list. And inside of this, go ahead and create a for loop. So for choice in question dot choice set dot all. Okay. Um, we're going to use the ul tag to signify, I'm sorry the li tag, whoops, um, the li tag to signify that it's a bullet point or a list item. Um, and we want to pass in the choice text. So choice dot choice underscore text. All right, that should just display the choices. And then we want to end the for loop. So percent end for awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look, open up Chrome, head over to our polls. Okay, we have what's your age, what's your name, select a question, and now we have the question in big, nice text, and we have the three choices. Awesome. So this is exactly what we wanted. Um, perfect. And before we end this video, there's one thing I want to talk about. Right now, our code looks great. We have our detail HTML, we have our index HTML. There's no CSS to it. It doesn't look pretty, but it gets the job done. But suppose we had 10 pages, 15 pages, and as you do more web development, you'll realize that you're gonna have headers, you're gonna have footers, you're gonna have a lot of repetition on each website. Rather than copying and pasting the same HTML code into every template, into every web page that you create, wouldn't it be easier if you could have a base HTML file that you modify based on what you need. Basically, we create a base.html and then we add places in which we need to modify stuff. Suppose our body, right? In our detail.html, we're displaying the question text and the choices. In index.html, we're just displaying the questions. So obviously, we need to show change, but there are many things that are overlapping, that are redundant, that are happening over and over again that we can remove. That's the whole concept of three key tags, blocks, include, and extend. Let me go ahead and show you guys what they are. Right click on your polls, hit new, and add a new HTML file. 
call this base.html. All right, inside of this, this is gonna be your base.html. The way I want you to think about this is like a cookie cutter. A cookie cutter cuts dough, but every cookie cutter has a different shape. They all perform the same function, but you can modify the end result by changing the shape of the cookie cutter. And that's what we're gonna do here. So every single page will have the same HTML code as seen like this, but we're gonna allow change by saying block, so percent sign, block, and then main content. So this main content block is what we're allowing people to change. And then we're gonna say percent end block. These two lines of code right here allow us to modify the cookie cutter shape. So now we can get a square cookie cutter, a circular co cookie cutter, maybe even a Christmas tree like cookie cutter. So once we have this, the next thing is to include this inside of our detail.html and our index.html by, if you haven't guessed already, using one of the three functions mentioned. So this stuff, this HTML code you see right now is redundant because it's the same as the base.html. Over here up top, we're gonna say percent extends and then in quotation marks, polls slash base.html. And then we're gonna open and close the block wherever we want to override it. So since this is the stuff we wanna display inside of our block, we wanna open our block before this segment and end it after it basically like this percent block main content and then we end the block right here percent and block it's that easy see you see what we've done now is we have our base on html it the detail of html is going to have all of this code and then it's also going to have something special of its own namely this code right here let's go ahead and copy these two lines of code so that we can add them to our index.html as well. Go ahead and delete this, enter, paste this up top, and then go ahead and end block. So percent, end block, percent. It's that easy, all right, looks good. Take a look over here, looks fantastic. So let's refresh and hopefully we don't see any change in the code, but now if we modify the base.html file, we're gonna see changes throughout all of our web pages. So P header, um, let me go ahead and add some horizontal lines. Fantastic. So now if I go back and refresh, we have our header file, which is exactly, I'm sorry, we have our header, which is exactly what we wanted. Now there's one last command that we haven't talked about and that's the include file. Suppose you have some text from an HTML file that you want to include, some basic text, not anything too fancy. Well, that's where you can use the include file. Right click on your post directory, hit new HTML file and call this footer.html, okay? Go ahead and delete all of this content, add a HR tag, add a paragraph tag that says footer, and then go ahead and end it with an HR tag. Save this and head over to your base.html. And inside of this, I'll go ahead and show you what the include function or the include tag does. So open up a curly braces, percent, include, and then we're just gonna pass in the path. So what HTML file do we wanna include? Well, we wanna include footer.html. So polls slash footer.html and close the percent and the curly braces. So now what we've done is we've added any text content that was inside of the footer.html file, inside of our base.html, and in turn, it'll now display inside of the detail.html file, open up Chrome and refresh, fantastic. So we now have our footer. If I go to what's your age, we have the footer as well. If I go to what's your name, we have the footer. So this is the power of using these three commands. Basically, they save some time, they save a lot of time, and it helps us to reuse our code efficiently. Now, one last thing, um, over here, 
in our views.py, we're getting the detailed view of our question. But what if the question doesn't exist? Maybe the user did something wrong. We never know. And that's why there's something known as get object or 404. And what that does is it makes sure that the object exists. Otherwise, it returns a 404 error that you might have seen probably maybe on Facebook, maybe on Google, anywhere for that matter. But basically, it just returns an error, which you want to display. So go ahead and from Django.shortcuts, import render, comma, get object or 404, okay? And then when we're doing this question is equal to blah, go ahead and say, um, get object or 404. And then we want to pass in question, comma, the ID. So PK is equal to question equal to ID, okay? That looks good. Go ahead and try it out. I believe that should work. So head over to Chrome, refresh, head back. What's your age? Awesome. So let's do a quick recap of everything we covered. We did our detailed HTML page. We got our question text displaying. We're showing our choices. And then we also learned something very neat about blocks, extends, and include that enables us to have a template and then modify specific parts of that template for efficient and reusable code. And then last but not least, we just played around a little bit with 404 errors, making sure that in case we ever run into an error, we can always return a 404 saying that, hey, there's an error, we can't continue. Anyways, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like this video, and I'll see you in the next lecture.